Hello, is anybody there? Is anybody there? Is there anybody there? <laughs> Who's there? Who's with me? How are you doing? Oh, Dougie's come to see me. Yeah, let me move this so you can come, so you can come and see. Come on. Do you want to come up? You want to come and see everybody? Hello, everybody. Who's watching? Who's with me? Hi there. It's been, a, it's been a busy week. It's been a busy day. How are you doing? It's happy Friday. Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. Still dry January. It's Friday, but it's still dry January. So no drinky poos yet. Right, do you like my do you like my um t-shirt that I made? Special. Special. It says, Do you like it, Maddie? Your body, your rules, do not let society screw you up, which is so true should be proud of what you got anyway anyways i can't get comfy maddie you too are you coming up or not are you coming up come up if you want to come up how are we all doodling this evening i'm sorry it's not half past 12 but i were i were out busy we we're out busy they were busy in the hospital and they just needed a little bit of help so i had the privilege of working today in theater and on the ward so that was lovely hello to all my lovely colleagues don't work too hard don't forget to drink water right then oh maddie you're so cute are you coming up come on then hop hop up right anyway so hi sue hi hi anna have you behaved yourself today anna not been having fun and games on a on a farm have you sorry about me air by the way it's been Hi Rosie, it's been clipped up today, but I don't know what I'm going to do with this hairdo. My daughter usually does it. Why are you licking my hand? My daughter usually does it, but she's gone to uni. Anyway, what I wanted to talk to you today about, I was well excited and I'm excited now. It's called the reticular activating system. Right, this is what it says about the reticular activating system because... I can um, articulate it as well as this. The, reticulate, the reticular activating system filters and prioritises sensory information to let the mind be focused and alert. So first of all, apparently the reticular activating system, it's just a part of your brain. It's like somewhere back here, I think. Right. And... Right, so first of all, just to try and um, give you an example or show you, illustrate um, what the reticular activating system is, I want you to do a little exercise with me. Right. Are you doing the little exercise with me? Don't bother doing this exercise if, you, if you're driving or, or operating um, heavy machinery. Right. So I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open them again open them again i was just testing right well done right what i want you to do now is sit in the room that you're sitting in and have a right good look round have a right good look round have a right good look round have a right look good look round are you looking have you got your eyes open looking Hi Louise, hi Gail, hi Sue, we've got Sue Riley and Sue Lloyd, very privileged, thank you ladies, how are you? So are you looking around the room and what I want you to take notice of is everything that you can see that is beige, right, as many things as you can think of that are beige, look, right. the dog's choking here, what's the matter with you? Right, are you looking around the room? Beige, so for me, hi Carolina, beige, 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 that's beige, that's beige, that's beige, that's ye ye yellowy beige, what else, what else, Is there must be more beige things, that's beige-ish, right, okay, 
Now I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Are you closing them? Right. Now I want you to tell me all the things that you saw in the room that were green. Keep your eyes shut. Can you remember what you saw that was green? Can anybody remember what they saw that was green in that room with your eyes shut? No cheating. No cheating. It's harder than you think, isn't it? It's harder than you think because what you're doing in your, your brain is going... What? Your brain is going... Um, well, you asked me, you asked me what was beige. You didn't ask me what's green. So the point of the exercise is that when you're, you tell your brain to focus on something, it's really good at focusing on it. So you probably even thought of some things that were beigey brown, like I did yellowy beige and some things that were browny brown. Yeah. And when I asked you to think of, uh, to, to list what you could see that was green it's not so easy is it you want to have a peep don't you you want to have a peep and look right so that really really well that if you do that exercise and you do it properly it really cleverly illustrates what the reticular activating system is because what the reticular activating system does which is part of your brain that's sitting just here um is it's it's your filter and the reason your brain needs a filter is because all around us, I researched how many bits of information there were once and I can't remember how many thousand, thousand bits of information there are all around us. So what I mean with bits about bits of information, I mean things that are sensory, so what you can see, what you can smell, what you can hear, um, what you can taste. So all those bits of information around you and all the things that you can see are just it's all too much information the brain can't fit it's impossible for the brain to take in that much information so it can't so it needs a little system going on to for you to tell your brain which bits of information you would like to focus on so which bits of information out of all this lot all everything going on do you want to remember or think about? So the point of this is that your reticular activating system filter, so your personal filter is not the same as mine. It's not the same as the next person's. And you create your own individual filter for all the information that's around you. And you build that up over your lifetime um, as a child as well, depending on your... Um, beliefs and values so for example let me try and um expl find an example so some people um have had bad experiences with men and they will say to you all men are big fat pigs all men are horrible all men are horrible they're all pigs they're all going to be mean to you and if that particular person has had those experiences of people being not very nice to them, you know, that is providing evidence for your reticular activating system. And what your body, what your brain does is look for evidence to prove that your thoughts and beliefs are true. So you do get people that think all men are, all men are pigs and they're all big bees and they're all horrible and the more people, the, the more men that that person comes across, um, comes across that's horrible, that just strengthens their belief that all men are pigs. OK, strangely enough, when I was growing up, I always used to fancy people called Gary. And I thought to myself, I thought, how, how come I always fancy people called Gary? And well, I fancy Gary Barlow, one of my first boyfriends was called Gary. He wasn't very nice. Um, oh, well, there was a few Garys. They weren't all gorgeous, but for some reason, I've told me reticular activating system that I fancied Garys. Anyway, I ended up marrying a Gary, so make of that what you will. So anyway, reticular activating system is your filter is specially programmed depending on the beliefs that you, you grow up with. 
um, and over your lifetime, the things that you believe. So you might get somebody that says, I am, I am, I'm not a very confident person person. I'm not a very confident person or I'm a very shy person. I'm not a very confident person. So if that's their belief, they are constantly looking for evidence to prove that that is true. Now, the reason that I am telling you this stuff is because there are some things people used to think that the brain was like set in concrete and there was no change in it. It, it is how it is. You can't change it, like the habits you 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 um, you develop. There's no change in it, but they found out that that's not true. Your um, your brain, we can change the way our brains work, and it's called something called neuroplasticity, if I'm saying that right, which basically means means that you can you can use little techniques to tweak and change and grow new neural pathways in the brain and change the way you think really so that it's been proven that you can do that so the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to because I like knowing the reason things happen and the more you find out about the brain the more you can um tell yourself that I, I can change this I can I know I, I know I've read the manual manual of the brain and I know how to change this so some of you might um some of you might have heard of somebody called called Mel Robbins. You can find loads and loads of her YouTube videos online. But I just picked out a couple that I thought illustrated what I was trying to explain to you. So I'm going to pop those on my Facebook page when I've finished. Um, and this one's called, the YouTube clip's called The Number One Habit Billionaires Run Daily, which I'm not quite sure, but why it's called that um but it's talk she's talking about visualization and the importance of visualization so the little youtube clip looks like that and it says you must become a master of visualization so i'm going to put that up it's a it's a mel robbins one and you know you don't have to want to be a billionaire but there's some really helpful little snippets in here that's going to really really help you and as I'm waffling on, you'll see if you keep on this and stick with me, what a difference it's going to make for you going through pregnancy and going through your labour. And then we'll come on to um, affirmations and how that can help. So what sometimes we have problems with are if you've had a baby before and things didn't go to plan and you feel really um quite negative about that experience or or it was an unpleasant experience and you've got pregnant and you're really worried about going through the experience again because the experience you had last time is proving to you that you should be fearful of this next um labor and or cesarean section so that's what your brain holds on to and also um, if it's your first baby, very often you get lots of people's, people like to tell you their negative birth stories. People like to tell, but, and that's about them kind of offloading the, um, their sort of trauma. But it's, it's, I always think it's a little bit unkind to, um, tell a pregnant lady negative birth stories because that negative birth story is, is belongs to that other person you know it's not everybody's birth story and every birth story is different um depending on the meaning you put towards it and you know how you coped with it hi joanna hi lauren so sometimes with lots of negative birth stories first time mums can become a little bit fearful of the unknown really and then if the only information they get is oh oh it were awful Never doing that again. Never, it was awful. Rather, I'd rather have, I'd rather stick forks in my eyes, you know. It's not kind to say things like that to, to pregnant women. It's not kind. So hopefully I'll give you a little, some little tools to use to help reprogram the mind because you can. Okay, so, so, this number one habit that Mel Robbins talks about is visualisation and the absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing snippet 
of information I found out. I did already know what the reticular activating system was, but I found out, I found out that actually when your brain remembers actual experience, experiences, so your memories, that um, has as much influence on your reticular activating system as visualised things that you so by visualization um oh, i'll come down in a minute so oh, it's put me well out of my flow now so um visualization we we're talking about so um so what we mean about visualization is very often um it visualization is very very um involved in hypnobirthing so you you know you get the hypnobirthing scripts and a lot of people feel really sort of odd and strange um you know going through the scripts because it'll say imagine you said imagine you're walking down to the beach and you can see all the leaves blowing away with all your worries so even though that might sound a bit hippie and out there and oh that's never going to work there's you know mel robbins talks about the stuff that she um she looks at is based on you know it's it's backed up with research and um scientific principle principles and what she says is that those memories of actual things happening carry the same value of as you visualizing something so the things that we want you to visualise is how you want to change the way you see something or your reticular activating system. Because if, for example, you're remembering what a traumatic birth you had last time and things didn't go quite to plan. And by the way, sometimes traumatic births aren't always um, births that have gone awfully wrong or anything terrible has happened it's the it's the meaning that people attach to things so you can get somebody who has had quite a complicated delivery and birth and actually they remember it with fondness because they feel safe they feel that they were looked after they feel that everything was done that was necessary and they they look on that as i'm you know i've you know, that was really important for my care because me and my baby are healthy. Whereas somebody else can put different meaning to something that when you look at the notes, you think, well, I can't see that anything awful happened. But that lady might remember those events really quite traumatically, which is, is awful. So if that's happened to you and all you're doing is remembering something that is really not very nice what we need to do is it's very difficult to tell your brain don't think about that what you need to do is give your brain something to try and change that pattern of thought so what you can do is closing your eyes and and i'm going to put the mel robbins little video up because i think she explains it beautifully and she's talking about people in general so it works for everybody but i think it's particularly helpful for trying to change the way you think about birth especially if it's it's something that you look on quite fearfully so if you close your eyes and you and i would suggest to you Doing some of the um, hypnobirthing uh, visualizations, meditations, because they're all trying to reprogram your reticular activating system. So that you find that a lot of the visualizations are talking about a nice calm birth. And this is amazing stuff that they're telling you that if you can visualize really, really specifically. So what I mean by specifically is that you are visualising what sort of birth you want, what sort of birth, and, it, and presumably everybody wants a nice, calm birth. So you visualise the room that you might be in, the people that might be there, how you're going to feel in that situation, you know, and just keep doing, and what they say is you do it over and over again, and that helps, really helps 
um, reprogram your brain and create new neural pathways. And it works for things like people who say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this in my business or I'm going to do that in my business, you know, and it says that, it, you know, that increases confidence and it helps change that filter. So it takes some work and that's why things like hypnobirthing, um, if any of you guys have looked into hypnobirthing, it relies on you, the repetition of doing the same thing because you're trying to you're trying to build new neural pathways and it takes a little bit of time. Um, you know, so when you try when you're visualizing, close your eyes and doing those um, scripts where you're walking down to a Moses basket and you're seeing your baby and you're visualizing yourself with your baby in your arms. Some of those are, that's why they do that because it's trying to help you visualize, you know, the, the reason that you're doing this thing really. So I'll tell you what else I found really, really helpful is because lots of people struggle and especially now, so it's not just around birth but in general a lot of people suffer with anxiety about different things we all do it at some time and so i'm going to put that it's this um youtube video it looks like that on the on the page so i'm going to put that up it's called how to stop your anxiety in five seconds no more panic attacks how amazing is that how amazing is that so these things are all just designed to give you um little tools and techniques to try and... can you hear him can you hear him come in come in um so give you tools to manage um anxiety and hopefully make you feel a little bit better and sometimes you know we know that you pregnant women are in in some appointments on your own and it does cause you know worry sometimes and sometimes anxiety and sometimes anxiety when you're on the ward on your own and you know you haven't got your partner there so the technique that mel robbins talks about is a really really um really really helpful tool i thought is she said what the brain does is that for a start off you're you're in the room and focused but what your brain does is your brain just drifts off it drifts off and it goes, oh, I'm worrying about this. I'm worrying about that. Oh, you're in a meeting and you, you're thinking they're not they're not taking me seriously or I just sound stupid or or you, you're sitting in the waiting room and waiting for your um, consultant appointment and you're saying, you know, they're going to tell me everything's all wrong and my partners are not here and I'm just I'm not going to say the right thing. I'm not going to ask the right questions. So then you get this pattern of anxiety and worry. And what she says is some some people, as we know, worry more than other people. Some people are worriers. And that, that you know, people, certain people being worriers, it just becomes a worrying habit. So the worrying becomes a habit. And the part of your brain that deals with habit is different to the part of the brain that you need to count with. So the f feeling is, is that, you, you know, the advice that she gives is that when you feel that your brain is drifting off into that negative and worrying state and you're being unkind to yourself and saying, um, oh, you're, you're never going to do this. You're never going to have this baby. It's never going to end. It's all going to go wrong. So you catch yourself doing that. If you catch yourself talking to yourself negatively because it's just part of the old routine, it's part of the habit, you count down from five to zero. Five, four, three, two, one. And she says the counting is really, really, really important because what it does is it engages, a, the counting business engages a different part of the brain to almost snap you out of that um, negative habit so that your brain is then um, ready to receive a different a different thought. So by counting five, four, three, two, one, you, you're engaging the prefrontal cortex, that's what it's called, and, the, and it says the mind is ready to receive a different thought because of the counting so she says the counting's um 
the county is a really, really important part of the process. And then she says, that is when, when you've done your counting, five, four, three, two, one, and then you engage your anchoring thought. Right, an anchoring thought is another tool. Now, I've looked up how to explain it to you, so it makes sense. So if you've not heard of an anchoring thought, it's a way of sort of bringing you back almost. So it's a, a rank, an, anchoring, an anchoring thought is a pre-established, planned out thought that helps you stop the anxious spinning. <sighs> never going to do this, never going to do this. And return to truthful, a truthful and supportive place. So we all find ourselves doing it, You're drifting off, going, oh, God, I'm doubting myself. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to birth this baby. Five, four, three, two, one, anchoring thought. So the anchoring thought is something that I would recommend that everybody has a really good think about. So you're ready with it. Draw a picture of it. Close your eyes. Imagine it. And it's basically a place where you feel comfortable and happy and it's just reminding you the things that you're happy about the things that you're proud of yourself about because even though we're really horrible to ourselves and we're full of negative self-talk we all do it you know oh let's get rid of that we all do it so it's just trying to replace it hopefully we all have some good th thoughts about ourselves as well like you know, if I was talking about myself, I am proud of myself because I'm not even medically trained and I decided I was going to be a nurse and then I was going to be a midwife. And I, that, you know, when I was an adult learner and I'm really proud, especially the midwifery training was really, really challenging. And I'm proud of myself that I use my determination and hard work to do really well at my course and get a job. So I'm really proud of myself. So hopefully we all have little snippets in our lives that we go, it's not I did that. I did that and I'm really proud of myself. So also, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, um, about the diff, what, well, what I found out about being excited and being afraid. So afraid doesn't feel nice, does it? Afraid, if we tell ourselves we're afraid, that's, we don't really want to go there, do we? But what Mel Robbins says is she says, physiologically, being excited and being afraid in the body is the same thing. So she says your heart rate races, you get sweaty armpits, clammy hands, you know, maybe before you're going to give a speech or, you know, and your throat tightens up and you might get pink cheeks. Well, you don't, I've not got pink cheeks because I'm afraid. I've got pink cheeks because I'm 47. That's why I've got pink cheeks. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So the physiological response being afraid or being excited is exactly the same. So she says, if you feel that you're, um, you're having that physiological response and you feel afraid, let's switch that around. So what you need to do is give your brain some context and stop it from spiraling, spiraling out of control in this, um, in this cycle of being afraid. So one of the little tools you can use is when you feel afraid, tell yourself, say it out loud, doesn't matter if anyone is, say, I'm excited too. So you say, you know, the physiological response is the same. So instead of going, oh my goodness, what's going to happen to me in labour? It's all going to go wrong, such and such. Betty down the street, she said she nearly died in labour. Oh, and it all went wrong. And oh, she's told me, oh, never again having kids. So instead of letting things spiral out of control and being afraid, once you get that feeling, and it might, you might feel like that when you get on delivery suite, everything's different, everything's new. And that's why one of the main jobs of a midwife is to give you reassurance and say, you're in a safe place. We're going to look after you. It's going to be fine. 
So tell yourself when you feel that um, feeling of being afraid, say to yourself, I'm excited to do this because, right, and I'm telling you now, I've had my four babies and still now, still now, when I walk through those delivery suite doors, I remember every time I've walked through those delivery suite doors and thought, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm going to want my baby, I'm going to get to see that baby. You know, all those dreams you have. Well, I don't know whether it's just me where you dream that you've pulled your baby out to have a look at it. I used to dream that all the time, that you've pulled your baby out to have a look at it and then you can't get it back in. I know I'm a weirdo, aren't I? But you, basically, you're so excited because you just want to see... People pay loads of money for 4D scans because they want to see their baby's face, you know? So when you go into delivery suite, you're nearly going to see your baby. You're nearly going to meet your baby. It's such... It's such an exciting feeling. So if we can tell the brain, tell the brain that. So if we can switch that round from being afraid to being excited. And if it means you saying, I'm excited to meet my baby. I'm excited to meet my baby. I'm excited to meet my baby. It, it just, you know, gives the brain some context and, and you know, you're reminding yourself why you're there. And women, we know women are stronger than they think you are. Women have been giving birth for millions of years. You know, you're amazing and designed to do that. So I'm going to I'm going to talk you through some of the affirmations I've got. Oh, and one of the other things that I, f I forgot to mention on on this. So if you're somebody who's a um, afraid and a worrier, Flip it around and, and tell yourself, I'm excited to do this. And then Mel Robbins says, you can ask yourself, in I can't say this, interrogatory questions, interrogatory questions. So what interrogatory questions are, she says, is asking yourself, why? Why am I ready to do this? Why am I excited? So, right, OK, we've done that. I'm excited to be, meet my baby. Why? Because I've waited nine months to meet this baby and do you know what? I can do this. I'm going to do this. I can do this. This is the last, last hurdle and I'm strong enough and I've got support and the midwives are going to, they're just going to be my cheerleaders and tell me I'm all right and I can do it. So, you know, tell yourself why you're actually there and remind your brain that you're going to get to meet your baby. I still get excited for women because I know what it's like. You go, I'm here. I'm here. I'm through the doors. I'm going to see my baby. Right. OK, so we've gone gone through that. I've explained to you what I would get ready with your anchoring thought. And it might be <sighs> calm. Do you know what? Do you remember Jordan North on um, what was it called? On the jungle. And he he was going. Turf more, turf more, happy place, happy place, right? That's his anchoring thought because he's going, right, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm in that space where I feel happy and everything's all right. So wherever your happy place is, think of that and what you're doing. And, you know, you and your partner might have waited a long time to have this baby. You know, you might have children already at home that are so excited to meet their new sibling. You might have parents that are amazingly excited to become grandparents so i'm going to lead on to um what an affirmation is so an affirmation i don't think i think i wrote it down but basically the oh hang on i have got it here the definition right can you read this the i'll read it to you anyway the definition of affirmation is the act of confirming something to be true or is a written or oral statement that confirms something is true? An example of an affirmation is reminding a child that she is smart or he. OK, so an affirmation is something that you believe to be true. And it's almost like you're just reminding yourself about it. You're just reminding your brain that this is true. So when people, you know, I do it to myself sometimes when I go, oh, I'm awesome. I'm, all, I'm amazing. Amazing I am. And do you know what? When you get to my age, I am really proud of myself. I'm a proud 
proud of some of the obstacles and challenges I've overcome in my life. And so, yes, secretly inside, I'm quite proud of myself. And I do think I'm amazing. You know, things have gone not too bad for me. I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Um, so anyway, it's not PC, is it? You know, it's not fashionable, is it, to big yourself up? But you should do. It's good for you to big yourself up. Remind yourself all the good things that you've done and everything that you've achieved. So the affirmations are just reminding you what you already know. So it's reminding you what you already know so that your brain, you know, we all know these affirmations, don't we? And say, you know, women are, you're stronger than you think and all that lot. You've seen them all, haven't you? We have, we have to have metal signs, don't we, up in our kitchen and, and magnets just to remind us what we already know. So some of the ones that I've found are just birth affirmations. I trust my body. My body is made to do exactly this. I soften, I open, I release. So I soften, I open, I release. And it's a bit wiggly, that writing. I hope you can read it. I soften, I open, I release. Let's just take that one for a moment. Right. I soften, I open, I release. That is what the body is doing in labour. The cervix softens, the cervix opens, and you release. And the baby comes out. So they're all things. It's just reminding you what you already know. And so it's going brain, brain, you know this stuff in here. And so let's have a look at some more of them. I can do this. I am doing this. So in the throes of labour, when you feel really tired and you just think, how long is this going to go on for? How long is it going to go on for? You can do it. You can do it. Your body is designed to do it. And you'll come out the other side. You might be tired, but you'll come out the other side and you'll feel amazing. And you get to see your little baby's face. And, you know, I've never I've never come across a woman that's had a baby, no matter how tiring, how long they've been in labour and not and said, oh, wasn't really worth it, was it? Wasn't really worth it. Put it back. They all say, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Look what I've got. And you get a mummy gazing into that newborn baby's eyes with love. And they are proud of themselves. And they go, do you know what? I did it. And, you know, however you birth your baby, whether it's induction, whether it's, um, you know, you go into labour spontaneously or whether you have a cesarean section, you know, you've grown your baby and you've birthed your baby and you should be proud, you know. Right, so we've got, I can breathe through this contraction and they, I quite like this one. Women all over the world are birthing with me now. Women all over the world are birthing with me. Don't you think that's lovely? Because we're, it's something we know to be true. You know, oh, how many babies are born every second? So, you know, right now, you are not alone. There's however many women giving birth as well. So, these are some of the ones that I quite like as well. So, this will be my greatest achievement because labour isn't the easiest thing to go through. It's a, you know, it's a challenge sometimes. There, so I am relaxed and calm. I think that I am relaxed and calm. You might not feel that way. However, if you do your work, um, meditations and um, some of the hypnobirthing um, um, techniques. And do you know what? These things are all at your fingertips. I'm going to put on um, something that I found. It's the same lady that I've put on before um, about, you know, I think meditation for birth fears. So I think going through that and don't feel silly doing it and do it over and over and over again till it gets in there. And then you can use this. I am relaxed and calm because you can go, oh, you know, when we do this, you know, brain, when we do this, we feel relaxed and calm. And a lot of the time women like um, having a bath when they're in early labour because their brain goes, do you know, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this is why women like being in the bath in early labour, because the brain goes, oh, you know this, you like this, this is relaxing, especially with the candles round. 
This is relaxing. We're all right here. I'm relaxed and calm. Okay. This, this one is a big one of my favourites. You are a badass. You can do this. You know you are. You know you can do it. And there you go. You are stronger than you ever thought possible. When you've had a baby. <coughs> I've talked a lot today. Excuse me. Right, let's have a look at some other examples. You can just Google birth affirmations. Many, many others have done this. So can I. I will birth fearlessly. I am safe. And I hope you feel safe in our care. And if there's anything when you're in hospital that's especially worrying you, please tell your midwife. You don't need to worry unnecessarily about things. If the midwife might be able to say, oh, yeah, we can sort that out for you. We can put that right for you. We can turn the lights down for you. I can, I will. Each wave brings me closer to baby. My body opens softly and easily. These are things that your, ba your body is doing. And this one here, my muscles work in complete harmony to make birthing easier, right? I hate to tell you this fact that women, right, your body was designed to, number one, grow a baby, number two, give birth to a baby, and number three, have some milk produced for a baby. So, do you know, isn't it amazing? Right, we'll go through some of these because I'm nearly done now. My body knows how to have this baby just as my body knew how to grow this baby. I love that and I really like that tree. That, that tree, I wonder if that tree could make an appearance in one of the rooms. Um, and the reason I like these affirmations is it says birth is miraculous however it happens. So sometimes women are a little bit put off or feel a little bit, like they've missed out on an experience if they have a cesarean section. But what you've got to remember is, you know, if the cesarean section is necessary to, and that's the safest way to bring your baby in the, into the world, it's still the fact that you've grown a human being in your belly is a flipping miracle. So be proud of it and celebrate your body. Your body's done an amazing job. And this... You know, I am proud of myself, however birth goes. Sometimes births don't go the way you expect them to go because we can't see into the future and we don't know until you're in labour, until you, you know, going to have your baby. We don't always know how things are going to go. You know, but, but there are lots of people, even in this pandemic crisis, and I've been working on the ward today, the women are so well looked after and the midwives and the doctors are there to keep you and your baby safe. And I had the privilege today to care for a really, really lovely family. I can't believe how lucky I am to have my job. That, you know, they, they say thank you to me. And I say thank you to them because what a lovely job. Just being, you know, part of that wonderful experience and how beautiful it is. So we're always really privileged and really thankful that you let us care for you and we want it to be lovely and the reason why me and my colleague Paula are putting all the effort and work into delivery suite is because we want those birth affirmations on the wall we want them to be in your face to remind you how amazing you are and just to hang in there and that it's exciting don't be afraid, be excited. Put that fear into being excited. I'm excited to do this. So what I would suggest, if you've not done any preparation for birth, get doing it. You can have a look at the um, YouTube. Hello. Have a look at the YouTube clip that I'm going to put on. I can't remember what the girl's name is, but I really liked it. Don't feel stupid about sitting there for a few minutes calming your mind because sometimes your brain needs calming down it goes off in all directions worrying about all sorts of things and it needs bringing back have a think about what your anchor thought is and really close your eyes you can practice this anchor thought going into your happy place and then you've got that tool for when you go into delivery suite when you're breathing through those contractions or when you're waiting to go um into theater 
you know there's loads of people there want you to have a special play a special uh, memory and a special time when you're with us hang in there you women are amazing you women are strong and you're doing it even better considering the circumstances you are having your babies in last year and this year all right you're never on your own you take care all right i'm sorry it was late today joining you but you know what it's like you know what it's like we've just been busy so we'll see what adventures i'm working tomorrow we'll see what adventures um tomorrow and next week bring all right you take care ladies see you soon bye